Hey y'all. Have y'all ever heard of resistant starch? Um, I learned about it some years back from my good little friend, Gina. She's a nutritionist. She's also um, my P90X instructor and she's a good friend um, as well. So anyway, I wanted to share this with y'all because it will really change your um, pasta eating and your potato eating and any kind of grain eating um, oatmeals and beans and uh, what else? Rice, yes. So anyway, tonight, John and I are gonna have red chicken. And that's on one of my videos and it's so easy. It's in the crock pot and it's like, I need to be in the office all day today. So it's gonna cook for me in that crock pot and we have it over pasta in the evening. And let me get my pasta in this pot. Like I say, it's the morning time and I'm gonna pre-cook this and then I'm gonna chill it down. And I put my red chicken over penne pasta. Let me put that in there. Let this cook for about six to eight minutes, and I'm gonna put a nice healthy pinch of salt in there, because that's the only time you get your pasta seasoned is when you're cooking it, okay? As far as in the pasta. Anyway, let me tell y'all about resistant starch if you haven't heard of it before, because it's wonderful. Um, it could be good for weight loss because it helps you control your glucose, okay? Um, it's resistant starch. It's a carbohydrate. Yes, I printed this out so I could not slaughter this with y'all. That resists digestion in the small intestine and ferments in the large intestine. As the fibers ferment, they act as a prebiotic, which is good, and feed the good bacteria in the gut. There are several types of resistant starch. They are classified by their structure or source. More than one type of resistant starch can be present in a single food. And there are foods that have resistant starch in them, but I'm just talking about these that we like to eat so much that we know are um, high in starch and uh, don't aid in our weight loss, right? And our glucose. When starches are digested, they typically break down into glucose. Because resistant starch is not digested in the small intestine, it doesn't raise your glucose. Gut health is improved as fermentation in the large intestine makes more good bacteria and less bad bacteria in the gut. Healthy gut bacteria can improve glycemic control. Other benefits of resistant starch include increased feelings of fullness, which helps us, treatment and prevention of constipation, decrease in cholesterol and lower risk of colon cancer. Resistant starch is fermented slowly so it causes less gas than other fibers. So, this is one example that I do for John and me if I have time. Now, if I don't have time, I cook it and we eat it, okay? But just if I have time, um, it says try cooking rice, potatoes, beans, and pasta a day in advance and in the refrigerator, let it cool overnight. It is okay to reheat your starch um, before eating it. Reheating does not decrease the amount of resistant starch that you've already um, made in it. In place of cooked oatmeal, try uncooked oats soaked in yogurt, milk, or non-dairy milk overnight. And I do wanna do some of those really soon with y'all. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to share this one I'm doing for John and me today. And I'm not doing it overnight because it's in the morning. And if I cool this down, I'm gonna let it cool a little bit out on the counter after I drain my pasta, and then I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator. And tonight, I'll just reheat it real quick on here, and we'll put that red chicken over the top of it that's cooking in the crock pot, and it'll really heat those uh, pasta, the penne pasta for us. And then I'm also helping John and me with our um, resistant starch. So I just wanted to share that with y'all because I think it's a fantastic thing and I think we all need to know about this, right? <laughs> okay guys, my pasta is done. How John and I like it, we kind of like it al dente. I'm gonna bring it over here. Let me turn my cold water on in my sink. There we go. I'm gonna pour it and drain it. I'm cooling the pot down a little bit there. Okay. 
<laughs> y'all like y'all pasta face when y'all are getting here? Alright, but here we go. Put this back into the pot, just like that. And I love to add a little bit of olive oil, just like that. So nothing gets sticky. And just toss it about. I'm going to let it cool for a few minutes before I put it in the refrigerator. And then I'm going to let it get in the refrigerator and get cold, cold. Okay, it is totally cooled down here. My pot's barely, barely warm. I'm going to cover it. And we're going to the fridge. Something I want to tell you, because I don't want to be the cause of it. Do not put any warm pot on a glass shelf in your refrigerator. And I know that because I've done it before when I was really young and it cracked. So, all right, here we go. We'll be ready for supper. This is our red chicken processing nicely. If you've not ever seen that recipe before, go find that video. Red chicken.